Hey guys, this is Mike with The Digital Life. Let's see if the Defender Pro is worth 40 more dollars of your money over the Subcase Unicorn Beetle. And we'll talk about that in this video coming up. For those of you here that are wondering if you should get either one of these cases, I'm going to tell you straight out right now. This case right here surprised me and I think that you should go with this case. Even if you're willing to pay the extra money for this one, the OtterBox, I think that you should go for the Subcase Unicorn Beetle. Reason being $21 versus $60. And you can get multiple colors. The only thing that holds you or anybody to the OtterBox is the little bit better of materials that they use, maybe a better quality material, maybe, and the warranty that you have on this product. If you keep your receipt, you can get a replacement of this case at no charge to you. You might have to pay shipping, which is like $10, something like that. But you could just go to Amazon and buy a brand new case. Also, both of these cases work with Whitestone Dome glass. This is the first year where I haven't had to figure out a way to allow for the Whitestone Dome glass to work with the OtterBox Defender. Like last year on the Note 20 Ultra, I had to modify it. First of all, a Whitestone Dome glass screen protector. It fits. Last year, the bottom of the case on the Note 20 Ultra laid on top of the glass. This time, they moved the bottom edge down a little bit, OtterBox did, so that way it just barely comes up to the edge of the glass. And what I used was the e-jig that they put into Whitestone Dome's installation kit here. It does make a difference in installing this. It's almost fail-proof. The top of it also does not touch. The sides come up to just to the edges here, so it is the perfect case. Last year, the little clip right here was basically right in the middle of the phone. Okay, so right there in the middle of the phone. For the S21 Ultra, they moved it down a little bit so you have access to the power button. You had access here, but it just wasn't quite as accessible, right? You see how the that is kind of in the way of the power button there? It's still accessible, but yet not quite as much. The only problem with this is if you want to put this in here, you want to install it, like this, you can't do it. So when it's on your hip, you have to make sure that this part right here is underneath here before you decide to install this. So you're going to have to pay attention when you're putting this in the holster, which way it is actually uh, being installed here. Um, that is kind of a pain in the butt for me uh, because last year it was gonna match up, no problem. So I understand why they did it. They wanted you to be able to reach, right, this power button, even while you have the holster on. Well, why keep the holster on, Mike? You say, you know, I'm not gonna ever use the holster. Well, guess what? I thought the same thing, and I actually always use the holster. If I'm, you know, just relaxing somewhere, and I just don't wanna have to hold the phone itself, which, by the way, this rubber feeling on the outside of the case is actually really, really nice. There is no problem with holding this case. It will not slip out of your hand, but with the holster on, you can kind of hold it like that and you have just more maneuverability, almost like a pop socket, but maybe even better because of the fact that you can lock it like that and then it locks onto your finger a little bit better. So yeah, the OtterBox Defender, it lives up to everything. It's, it's the OtterBox Defender. It's a good case. It's, I would say, I would still go out and spend $60 if you really like OtterBox, stick with them. They're great. But for about a year, I've been hearing people talking about Subcase. I finally broke down and used Subcase on my iPhones. It was just the regular transparent bumper case. This one was the only one that was available for the Galaxy S21 Ultra. And it's $21. So I thought, well, okay, it, has, it comes with a holster. It has uh, plastic build to it, no built-in screen protector, which is great. So this thing right here, it's hard to open, like it, if you don't have any fingernails, it's hard to kind of get your finger in there and it kind of hurts a little bit to open that. And then it will lock into place like that. But this plastic is super thin. So this might not work after a while because there's little tiny feet in there that allow this to slide back and forth like this. 
I don't know if they will ever actually come out or anything, how durable this will be, or even how much I will actually use this. So I don't think that this will last as long as this OtterBox material, right? Because it's got more of a rubber feeling and this isn't quite as grippy on the back. The sides are grippy enough. If that's something that you might want to consider, 21 bucks, you have to cut corners. You have to. But there's air pockets in the corners. That's where it counts. If you drop your phone, you want some an air pocket between the corner of your phone and the object that it's striking. So for that, this thing is great. The drop protection and the, the protection that you get from this is going to be on par, I would say, with the OtterBox Defender. Again, long-term durability, maybe not. How is this different? There's actually a little tab, like, well, a little opening right down here. If you can see that, that you can just pull back and this whole frame comes out just like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing out of the way. Whitestone, thank you for making a good glass screen protector this time around. Guys, let me know in the comments down below if you did purchase this. It's worth the money for me. Is it, was it worth it for you? Also, did you receive any broken screen protectors in your box? That's one thing I heard last year, somebody had to deal with broken screen protectors coming um, in their box and then they had to send them back. Then they said Whitestone asked them to pay a $10 shipping fee to get their screen protectors that they were actually never really able to take out of the box. That is not a good business. I guess some of them said, hey, no, Whitestone did help me out. And then others were said, well, Whitestone is hard to get a hold of. They wouldn't message me back, things like that. So I understand the business is booming right now and they were super busy, but they have to take care of the people that they want to buy their products. And when I hear that there's people having trouble with customer service, it's hard for me to recommend Whitestone. And it doesn't matter how good the product is. It doesn't matter. It could be the best product, but if the customer service isn't there, that's a major problem. Now, I understand that sometimes it is user error. Sometimes people, maybe they're just trying to get new screen protectors or whatever, right? Try to dodge that $10. I understand that, but Whitestone, please have good customer service because I want to recommend your product. Anyway, um, take that with a grain of salt. I've never had a problem with this, guys, and I do recommend Whitestone. So this case is going to come with an antimicrobial surface. Antimicrobial surface, you gotta be careful. That to me is kind of a marketing ploy. Um, everybody's kind of saying, yeah, we're doing antimicrobial surfacing and or antimicrobial materials or, or whatever. Um, that basically means that they're going, any bacteria that falls on this is supposed to, I guess, die. But the problem is, is when bacteria dies on the surface of an antimicrobial surface, the new microbes come and consume those old microbes and through the DNA of the old microbes, the new ones learn how to combat the antimicrobial surface. So otherwise known as super microbes, right? Now you have a super bacteria, right? Maybe not, okay, maybe not. I might be looking too far into that, right? But nonetheless, don't let an antimicrobial surface convince you that a, a product is superior than the other one that doesn't. That's all. That out of the way. Um, this is not so hard to get off. It's not as hard to, can, this is more of a, a harder plastic right here. Um, it seems like over time, it's the kind of plastic that maybe would get kind of hard and um, maybe get a little more, more brittle. This rubber over time will also stretch. Okay, so this will stretch out on you. So you can charge wirelessly through this case. It's super easy to get off of here. You've got plenty of lay on table protection um, when you have this down like this or on the back, there's plenty of space between the camera and the lip here. I highly recommend this case for you guys. OtterBox is great. If you guys have never picked one up, it's a good choice for you. Even for, for ladies, you know, to put in your purse, anything like that, I think it's a good choice. You can't really go wrong with this OtterBox case. Yeah, I didn't think I would like the OtterBox case. I thought it would be way too big, but people were saying, no, it's so good, it's so good. And so finally, I gave it a try. And convinced, I was convinced inst instantly. I just love the way it feels in the hand. This rubber feeling, it's just so nice. And it's not as big and bulky as you think it would be. So that just goes on there like that. And you can see that there's no 
screen protector touching here on the top, none at the bottom, and it basically lines up just like the OtterBox case. Okay, so this plastic frame, it's also made out of that cheaper kind of plastic, right? Um, but again, $20, it's, it's great. The inside, it's, it's kind of a hard plastic right here. And then it says uh, military drop tested. I don't know about military grade specs, whatever. I don't know any about anything about all that testing, but I do know that it feels like it would be a durable case. It's a solid back. Um, the sides are strong enough. And the, so the, the interior right here is pretty smooth. And there's an air pocket right here uh, for whatever reason. Not sure why there is one there because there's not really a need for one, but it might help with impact, right? So to keep the back from breaking. So I'll take all the help I can get. All right, so this installs uh, just like this. This is kind of hard to get up and over on the bottom here. There's quite a bit of rubber there holding onto that bottom flap. So I think it's going to be plenty strong for you. Again, this rubber doesn't feel like it would be as long lasting, but I'm not sure, not sure on that, as this rubber right here. It just feels a little bit more durable and the flap instead opens the other way. So this is face up it opens like this. So what happens is, is there's a little tiny bit of rubber right there at the bottom that's now holding onto this flap. There's not a whole lot of rubber there. Right here, there is quite a bit. There's plenty of room on the sides here, plenty of room on the top and bottom, and the camera is inset in there Yeah, quite a bit. Not quite as much as the OtterBox, but I would say it's enough. And this does feel about the same as far as width, but the same in the hand. It's not going to be a slim feeling case, but it's also not too big. Definitely good lay on table protection there. And let's see if this will charge wirelessly. Yep, good to go, wirelessly charging. The clip right here, again, it will lock in just like that. You can have a kickstand like this and like this, which is pretty cool. But I do notice that if you're not on a solid surface, it will want to fall pretty easy. And it does give you a fairly good angle. Although the materials are pretty cheap and they'll probably end up breaking, I would say after about six months, I would give this maybe, maybe eight months. But who knows, I might be surprised depending on how much somebody would use this, right? So you don't have to have the holster to be able to have that kickstand. And also you can put your finger through the loop right there. So, which also adds a little bit of extra stress right there. With this one, it, there's no actual like little certain point you have to have it installed, right? So it can be installed anywhere because there's no area that this little clip right here has to fall into, right? So there's a little bit different design there. For this one, it'll slip in just like that and closes it up, okay? Now the problem with this is the power button. It's covered up. So. What's cool about the new phones is you do have the ability to be able to just double tap. You can turn on double tap feature to turn off the screen, which is cool. That kind of negates the fact that you don't have the power button, but also the power button tends to want you, you can activate the, the camera. You can also double tap there and open up the camera there. You can also reach in just like that. So it's not a big issue. Either way you put it in there, you're going to be covering that power button. So um, that, Honestly, for me, not a problem. And that might be something you wanna consider. You can also put this in here, just like this. And just like the OtterBox, you can do the same thing here. So now you have your holster. And this clip does swivel, just like 360, just like the OtterBox. This has a little tab right here where you can push the clip open, but there's no lock, no lock. And the fit here is pretty tight. Putting your finger in there, for me, I have pretty big hands, fairly thick fingers. Um, it did start to hurt a little bit after a while, but I think that it would get the job done just if you're doing a real quick task with your phone, whatever that might be. Uh, for this right here, there is a little bit of a clip right there, like a loop to hold onto your belt or bag or anything like that to keep it from coming off. I wore this while I was working and it stayed on, no problem. It stayed out of the way. It was not a big deal for me. Um, I worked, I don't know, about a couple hours, and yeah, it was it was good. It was great uh, for me, 
and I wasn't too worried about it because I could just cover it up with my shirt and it was good to go. Uh, but the color blue here does look nice with the back of the phone, that black. There's one other thing I wanna show you. This has that same clip. The spring in this isn't quite as strong, um, which I kinda of like, but this does lock into place, right? So that's the OtterBox holster. Does this holster have a kickstand, right? It doesn't lock into place. How can it possibly stand? The top of the clip happens to come up a little bit further than the OtterBox does and it sticks out a little bit more, the clip actually does act as a kickstand. So, which is super cool, good design, and it'll stand on either one. So you just have to turn that around. So it'll stand like that with this tab down, if you want that as well. So before we finish up here, I wanna show you the inside of the OtterBox case here. It's got more of like a, a soft, kind of squishy feeling, memory foam, padding on the inside and that's what's up against your phone. I like that up against the phone quite a bit more than just solid plastic. I liked this case so much and it impressed me so much for $21. I just think that this is probably the case that you should probably try out first. Honestly, it is a good case. Subcase made a really good case for $21. You just can't go wrong for the price. It's so good, hard to beat. Very impressed that it works with Whitestone Dome. I just think that they paid attention to a lot of detail when it comes to this. They put a lot of thought and money into this. They did a good job. So I went ahead and picked up the other colors. Just so you can see what the experience is like and how they shipped it. And see, they even, they even uh, put padding in here for you. Please use a Samsung original wireless charger. After you install this case on your device, your device will has to be re, um, placed on the wireless charger for seven seconds before it will actually start charging. Just super impressive for $21. Like that color red is nice. So I'm going to go ahead and take this, flip this around so you guys can compare the two. For some reason they put this in here. That's obviously an iPhone right here. And it says, please remove the fitted glass screen protector on the mobile phone before installation. You don't need to do that. Getting this installed in here is a little bit more difficult into the, into the holster than the OtterBox. OtterBox is a little bit easier, it just slides right in. Um, but again, for the price, I think that this is really a hard case to beat. And I've got a purple one here. And I've got a black one coming as well, uh, but that purple one there, it looks super nice as well. Hopefully this helps you determine uh, which case to go with, OtterBox or Subcase. Uh, for me, yep, I still say uh, try the Subcase. It's super nice. OtterBox is obviously a good choice too. Can't go wrong with that, especially because it works with Whitestone. If you have any questions about any of these cases or if I've helped you at all, please let me know in the comments down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to be notified for when future videos are posted like this one in the future. Okay guys, I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.